Hi, my name's Amy Glidden. I'm a violinist with the Buffalo Philharmonic Orchestra, and I'd like to show you some things about taking care of your instrument and getting ready to play. So the violin is a very fragile instrument, and you notice that it's sitting up here in its case. I always try to keep it in its case as much as possible or sitting in its case where it's always in a really protected place. We're gonna to start today with how to get your bow ready to play and also how you would put it away once you're done with it. So first of all, I'm gonna get my bow out of its case. The first thing I do with my bow is I tighten it. So I take the adjusting screw and I tighten it righty tighty. You can see that the hair is very loose and floppy. I'm gonna tighten that bow hair, excuse me. And I want to be able to still see a little bit of a curve in the stick, a tiny bit. If you straighten your bow and it pulls the stick completely into a straight line, you've over, you've over tightened it a little bit. So you wanna to try to avoid that. So once I get my bow tight, I think I could use a little bit more. I've got to apply the rosin. So I have two different kinds of rosin to show you. Um, one is my fancy professional kind of rosin, and one is the rosin that you might be more likely to have with your violin bow. So, Here's the first kind. This is what my daughter has with her violin. And I hold the rosin in my left hand and I hold it with the rosin part sticking up and then I place the bow on top of it and I always hold my bow in my right hand because that's the hand that holds the bow and the more that you hold it, the better used to it you get. And I kind of just rub the two together. Just like that. You notice how I start at the bottom. I kind of gently go back and forth. I go to the top. Done. If you have a rosin that looks like this, you do the same thing. You hold it in your left hand. You put the bow hair on the rosin and you kind of rub the two together. Now that your bow is tightened, and rosined, you're ready to play. However, when you're done playing, you always have to make sure to loosen the bow. So you're going to turn the adjusting screw, lefty loosey, and you're gonna turn it until you see that bow hair a little bit loose and floppy, and then you're ready to put your bow away, which you always need to do once you're done playing, because like I said, this is a pretty fragile thing. It's pretty easy to break or get damaged. Let's talk about getting your violin ready to play. You notice my violin is sitting up here in its case. My violin is either in my hands or in its case. So let's take that violin and get it ready to start playing. Now, probably most violinists are going to be using a shoulder rest for their violin. So let's talk about how to put that on. I have two different kinds to show you. The point behind using a shoulder rest is to support your violin and make it comfortable to be on your shoulder. So any shoulder rest usually has sort of a fat part and a skinny part. And the skinny part goes right above your shoulder and the, far, the fat part would go down more onto your chest area. So if you have one that looks like this, you can see there's the skinny part that goes over my shoulder. Here's the fat part. It's gonna sit like that. Or if you have one that looks like this, you see it's got this indented curve right here. That's the part that curves over my shoulder. And then this part supports more onto my chest area. So when you go to put this on your violin, you have to hold your violin very carefully and you have to turn it over. Now, one thing people don't always realize about the violin is that all the elements of the violin, the bridge, the tailpiece, these are not glued on in any way. They are held up 
by um, pressure and also they're placed very carefully and any change in them can really affect the sound and the workings of your violin. So you don't want to lay your violin ever down on the ground or even on your lap just like this. You want to try to hold it and support it like this. So then you're going to make sure that the skinny part of your shoulder rest goes towards the G string side of your violin. And also you could say it's going to be the same side of your violin as your um, chin rest. So here we go. I'm holding it carefully. I'm not squishing any of the parts here. I'm putting this on. I'm sliding it on. There we go. Shoulder rest ready. Let's try the other kind. So here I am. Usually there's some type of rubber band situation going on here. So let me get the rubber bands on and it's going to be the same kind of a thing. I am going to get these rubber bands on here. I'm going to turn my violin over, very carefully hold it, and I'm going to make sure that the skinny side goes towards the G string or the chin rest side of my violin. And then I'm just going to place it underneath these rubber bands. Done. Probably one of the biggest things I see about getting the violin ready that's gonna help, it's gonna hurt your playing is what it's gonna do, is people turn their shoulder rest by accident the wrong way. So they end up putting the fat end to where it would be right on your shoulder and the skinny end where you need more support right here. And then it feels awful and your posture will be affected. So you wanna be really careful when you put on your shoulder rest. So now your violin would be ready to play. Let's talk about what you do once you're done playing. You're going to take off your shoulder rest carefully and you're going to get your violin ready to put back in its case. And one other element that you should always do, take a cloth and clean off the rosin. When the rosin builds up on your violin, it's just, it's not good for the violin and it also makes the violin not sound as good. That sticky residue, it kind of coats the strings and it affects the sound of your instrument. So always clean it off. Here I am, I'm gonna put it back in the case. Let's talk about putting your violin up when you are going to be playing sitting down in orchestra. So, Whenever we place our violin, we want to think about it as extending over the left side of our body. So the first thing that I do is I make sure I sit down and I have a straight back. I don't lean back in my chair. And I'm going to extend my violin out over my left knee. I'm going to flip it. And then I'm going to place it. You notice that the violin is at a right angle to my body and you want to try not to twist it. Don't do that. Do that. It can be a little tricky to read music and have your violin in the proper position. A lot of times I see people and let's say the music stand is right where this camera is and they're doing this. That's really not so good. You want to get used to holding your violin out at the proper angle and you're going to have to turn your entire body so you can look at your music and also look down the fingerboard at your violin. I'd like to show you good violin posture when you are standing to play. The first thing that you want to do is stand with your feet just a little bit of a distance apart. And then you always want to think about having your violin out over your left foot. So the first thing that I do is I extend my violin out over my left foot. I flip it up and I place it on my shoulder and I make sure it's snug against my neck. And then I put my chin down on the chin rest. All right, you notice that the violin is at a right angle with my body. And one of the things I do to make sure I have a really good placement with my violin is I'm going to put my arm down and see if it's comfortable to hold. Well, 
I've been practicing this for a lot of years, so it's pretty comfortable to hold. If it's not comfortable for you to hold, you should talk with your school teacher or your private teacher about any improvements or changes you could make with your chin rest or your shoulder rest. So this is good placement for your violin in the standing position. Let's practice making our bow hold and holding the bow. The first thing we want to talk about is the jobs that all of our fingers have to do in the bow hold. The thumb should always be bent. The pinky should always be bent. The two middle fingers always stay close together. And the index finger goes a little bit of a distance away. Sort of helps drive the bow, I would say. Sometimes I practice getting ready for my bow hold by making this shape with my hand. I meet my thumb with my two middle fingers and I make sure that my index finger and my pinky keep a nice curve. Then I get ready to hold my bow. When I'm practicing my bow hold, I wanna hold my bow in a vertical or upright position. It's just a lot easier to hold that way. So the first thing that I wanna do is take my thumb, make sure it's bent, and I wanna put it right in this area right here. I always make sure that that joint continues to be bent. Then I take my two middle fingers and drape them over the frog of the bow. I put my pinky on top and I put my index finger just a little bit of a distance away. Here you go. Let me show it to you from all different angles. This way, this way, and this way where you can really look and see the bent thumb. Now that I practiced preparing my violin and my bow for playing, and I made sure and checked my violin posture and my bow hold, I'm ready to put the two together and get started playing. So the first thing I'm gonna do is make sure I'm standing with my feet a little bit apart, and I'm gonna place that violin so it's extended out over my left foot. And I'm going to get my violin hand, my left hand, in the correct posture for playing. You notice that my elbow is pointing straight down towards the ground. It's not twisting one way or the other. And then my fingers are curved and ready to play. I had already made sure my bow grip is ready to go. And the first thing I like to do is I like to put my bow right on the A string. You notice I put it so it's right in the middle between the fingerboard and the bridge. That's the place where your violin sounds the best. And when you're playing, you wanna to try to keep your bow right on that track, and that way you're gonna get the best sound. You also notice that I've put my bow on the string, sort of the middle of the bow, so that I have a right angle in my bow arm. And that's a really nice, comfortable position to get started in. All right, let's play something.